Welcome. Today we are going to learn about the E. coli expression vectors and the topic that we are going to deal in detail it is the clone gene under control of the regulated promoter. In the previous videos, we have learned about the regulation of gene expression. And here it is the application of the regulation of gene expression. The systems that we have learned uh, under the regulation of gene expression, how it is going to be used for the development of the expression vector and for the controlling of the expression of the clone gene that we are going to learn today. Now, here, the controllable promoters which are used, okay, that, that promoters, that regulated promoters, it is the lambda PL, T7, TRC, TAC, uh, and here it is the P band. Lambda PL, T7, these are the FARCH promoters. Okay, the Lambda PL, it is from the Lambda FARCH and the T7, it is from the T7 FARCH. TRC and the TAC, okay, TRC and the TAC, these are the two hybrid promoters. And these hybrid promoters, they are made from the combination of the two promoters and that two promoters, it is the LAC promoter and the TRP promoter. And here it is the P bad. P bad, it is the promoter from the arabinose operon. Okay, so here the lambda PL, T7, TRC, and the TAC promoters, they are the strong promoters. And now these promoters, they are allowing the high level of the expression of the genes. Okay, so here there is a need okay there is a need of the regulation of the promoters there has to be the regulated promoters why because under the strong promoters there there is the over expression of the genes now the first we will learn about what will happen okay what will happen if the clone gene product it is giving the toxic product that is here we are going to learn about the effect of over expression of the toxic products though it is in a small amount okay so there are some of the uh, toxic products they are like the surface structural proteins or cystic fibrosis transmembrane conductance regulator or the lentivirus envelope sequences these are the toxic products for whom for the e coli cells now here as the product it is a toxic one okay the cell it is going to select for the mutants okay there will be the selection for the mutants which are the mutants that mutants which are no longer going to synthesize the toxic proteins now uh, suppose uh, in your home okay there are the mosquitoes what the mosquitoes they are going to do they are biting you that is they are going to trouble you and as they are going to trouble you okay what is your action you are going to kill that mosquitoes by any way you are going to killing that that is you are going to remove that mosquitoes from your home so that there will not be next trouble to you in the same way the cell what is it is going to do the product which is toxic to herself that that product it is going to be removed from the cell the from the origin from where that product it is going to come that is the clone gene product okay that is the clone gene okay that clone gene it is going to be removed it is going to be mutated or it is going to be deleted from the cell and as there is the as there are the mutations or, or as there are the elimination of the clone gene what will happen there will be no more expression of the genes into the uh, into the cell that is a toxic product it is not going to be synthesized into the cell so there will be the survival of the cell Okay, for this purpose, okay, for this purpose, there should not be the over expression of the toxic product. Okay, and for that purpose, there, there has to be a regulated promoter. Next year, though the product it is non-toxic, okay, there is a over expression of the gene, okay, a large amount of the product it has been made though it is a non-toxic what is going to be happen there will be the selection of okay there is the selection of the variant with lower or no expression of the clone gene why this is okay why this is going to happen why the cell it is going to select the variants though there is a though there is a, a product which is non-toxic as the product it is over expressing what is going to happen to all the system of the cell 
ओके इट इज यूटिलाइज फॉर द प्रोडक्शन ऑफ द प्रोडक्ट ओके प्रोडक्शन ऑफ द प्रोडक्ट फ्रॉम द क्लोन जीन एंड ड्यू टू दैट ड्यू टू दैट वॉट विल हैपन there will be the metabolic drain into the cell that is the metabolism it is going to be lower down the normal metabolism of the cell it is lower down there will not be the uh, the growth of the cells that is uh, or there is a slow growth okay this there will be the slow growth suppose the e coli it is growing into the it is doubling into the 20 minutes that time it may get doubled means the number of cells at a time which has going to be double they are going to be they are no, no they are not going to be there that is in 20 minutes there has to be the two cells okay they are going to be in a 40 minutes that is there is a slow growth and to retain the growth rate okay to retain the growth rate, growth rate the cell it is going to lower the lower the production of okay it is going to lower the production of the um, cloned gene product that is a non toxic product and for that purpose it is going to select the variants with the lower or no expression of the clone gene but it should not happen okay it should not happen a cell it should allow the expression of the clone gene it should accept the clone gene for that purpose there has to be the regulated promoters that is at a time when there is a need there will be the expression of the genes and when there is no need at that time there will not be the expression of the genes such a expression system it has to be selected here there is a expression vector and that expression vector it is a pet which is utilizing the promoter regulated promoter and that regulated promoter it is a t7 promoter just we have seen the t7 promoter it is a, it is from the t7 patch and this t7 promoter it is going to be recognized only by its t7 rna polymerases that is the e coli rna polymerases it cannot recognize the t7 promoter so for the recognition of the t7 promoter who is required t7 rna polymerases now we will see and the gene cassette okay which is cloned into this et vector and here you can see here it is a target gene okay here it is a lag operator and here it is whom it is a t7 promoter so there is a t7 promoter lag operator and the target gene or the clone gene as there is a use of the lag operator okay as there is a use of the lag operator ultimately there will be the repression by whom yes by whom by the lag repressor who is used the lag repressor so the lag repressor it will come and it is going to bound at the lag operator and it is not allowing the expression of the target gene okay so the repression it is how with the help of the lag repressor but when there has to be the expression of the gene okay this repressor it has to be removed and for that purpose the inducer it has to be added when we have learn about the lag operon okay in the lag operon the inducer it was a yes it was allolactose okay here you are not going to use the allolactose but here there is the artificial artificial inducer and that artificial inducer it is a iptg okay this iptg it is going to mimic, mimic the allolactose and this iptg now it is able to get bound with the repressor and it can remove the repressor from the lag operator and there will be the expression of the target gene okay so when there is okay when you want expression of the gene at that time you are going to just add the iptg in the medium and you are allowing the expression of the target gene okay and when you don't want expression of the genes at that time you are removing the iptg from the medium okay so in this way there will be what there will be the regulation okay there will be the regulation of the target gene or the cloned gene but here the t7 rna polymerases okay it is not present over this pet okay and this t7 rna polymerases it is mandatory for the for the t7 promoter so here on the on the genome of the e coli okay on the 
genome of the E. coli, there is a cloning of, okay, there is a cloning of the T7 gene 1. T7 gene 1, it is going to give the product and that product, it is the T7 RNA polymerases. This T7 gene 1, it is under the control of the lag promoter and the lag operator. Okay, and this lag promoter, it is going to be recognized by who? The E. coli RNA polymerases. And again, there is a use of what? There is a use of whom? Lag operator. So, there will be the repression with the help of the lag repressor. And IPTG, it is used for the induction. So, whenever there is a need of the expression of the genes at that time, just add the IPTG in the medium. And then it is allowing the expression of the uh, gene, gene 1, which is allowing the synthesis of the T7 RNA polymerases. This T7 RNA polymerases, it is going and binding to, to, to the T7 promoter and allowing the expression of the target gene or the clone gene. And when there is a no need, just remove the IPDG from the medium. But here, the, the promoters or the genes, they, they have the leaky transcription. Okay, so there is, okay, as there is a leaky transcription, Okay, leaky transcription is like how the leaky tab. The tab, although it is a closed one and uh, there, uh, there is a leaking of the water from the tab that it is a leaky tab. In the same way, though the gene, it is a repressed one, it is uh, it is allowing the, uh, at a lower level, there is what? There is a expression of the gene that it is a leaky transcription. And due to that, in the medium, or sorry, in the, cell, there is the synthesis of the T7 RNA, T7 RNA polymerases. So, how to control the excess of the T7 RNA polymerases? Here, there is an addition of, okay, here, there is an addition of the one more, okay, one more plasmid into the E. coli cell, which is compatible with the PET. And that plasmid, it is a PLYSS and uh, or the PET. Uh, P E plasmid. Okay, and this LYS S, it is the gene which is encoding the T7 lysozyme. Okay, what it is encoding? It is encoding the T7 lysozyme which is acting on the T7 RNA polymerases. The polymerases T7 lysozyme, it is going to act on the T7 RNA polymerases and it is going to inactivate the T7 RNA polymerases. Thus, in the absence of inducer, Thus, in the absence of inducer, there will not be any expression of the cloned gene. Okay, so in this way, there is very tight control over the expression of the cloned gene. Only in the presence of the inducer, there will be the expression of the gene. And when there is a no presence of the inducer in the medium, there will not be any transcription of the cloned gene. In this way, there is a controlling of the T7 promoter and there is control over the over expression of the genes. In this way, the T7 promoter, it is controlled. Okay. Have I understood this? Now we will go further. Okay. And here it is the next system. It is the Lambda PL promoter system. Now, just here see the construct. Okay, here yes, see the construct first. Okay, here it is a construct. It is a vector. Okay, here it is a gene of interest. That is a clone gene. Here the promoter, it is a PL promoter. PL promoter from the lambda patch. PO, it is a operator. Operator of the PL. Okay. Now, here, here it is the lambda C1 repressor gene. It is a G C1 repressor gene. Okay. And it is the under the control of the promoter and that of promoter it is a PTRP. That is from the tryptophan operon. And here it is an operator. Okay. It is also from the tryptophan operon. And who is a C1? C1 it is a repressor and it is a repressor of the PL. That is the binding of the C1. It is whom? It is a promoter, sorry, operator of the PL. Okay. So here, okay, how the system it is used? The, here on the vector, 
there is a gene of interest that is a clone gene here it is okay which is under under the control of the lambda pl and the uh, operator of the pl and on the chromosomal dna bacterial dna there is the c1 repressor gene which is under the control of the ptrp and uh, uh, its respective operator okay so uh, as as a c1 it is a repressor okay it can bind to the it can bind to the operator okay so when okay so when when we do not want the expression of the clone gene when we do not want the expression of the clone gene at that time at that time you have to you have to remove the tryptophan from the medium here um, when you want to control the expression of the gene okay here at that time in the medium you are going to add a tryptophan or you are going to remove the tryptophan remove the tryptophan means minus tryptophan add the tryptophan means what plus tryptophan okay so here when when you do not want okay when you do not want the expression of the clone gene at that time there has to be the expression of the c1 okay because c1 it is what c1 it is the repressor and bind this c1 it is going to repress the pl okay transcription from the pl it is going to repress by the c1 by binding with whom by binding with this operator okay which is the operator of the pl okay so when we do not want the expression of the gene okay clone gene at that time c1 it has to be expressed okay and for that purpose you are going to remove the tryptophan from the medium so as there is a no tryptophan okay the rna polymerases it is going to bound with the promoter of the tryptophan and then there will be the transcription of the c1 and then that c1 repressor now it is going to bound with whom it is going to bound with the operator of the pl and there will be the and there will be the repression of the gene of interest that is the transcription from the pl it is going to be inhibited there is a no transcription okay but when we want the expression of the gene at that time the c1 repressor it should not get synthesized okay so to inhibit the expression of the c1 there will be the addition of the tryptophan in the medium what is added in the medium tryptophan it is going to be added into the medium and the tryptophan it is going to bound with the trp repressor making it active and that then trp repressor it is going to bound with the operator trp repressor okay it is getting activated when it has been bound to the tryptophan so the tryptophan trp repressor they are going to bound each other trp repressor getting activated and it is binding to the operator of the trp promoter and as there is a binding of the repressor there is what there with the repression of the c1 c1 repressor it has been inhibited okay there is now in the cell there is a no c1 repressor then what will happen as there is no c1 repressor who will get active pl okay the pl promoter it will get active there will be the start of the transcription from whom from the pl promoter and the clone gene now it is getting transcribed and thus there will be the expression from the cloned gene are you getting pl promoter which is a strong promoter that pl promoter it is used okay but to control that pl promoter the another system it is also used with that and that it is of whom it is of from the tryptophan operon and from the tryptophan operon what is pick up the promoter and operator of the tryptophan operon and that promoter and operator of the tryptophan operon they are controlling the expression of whom the c1 repressor okay and the pl po from the lambda part they are taken 
and under that pl there will there is a keeping or there uh, there is whom there is the gene of interest under the pl okay so uh, here so here in this way these regulatory systems they are used for okay these regulatory systems they are used for the control of the overexpression of the genes only when there is a need at that time only that systems they are allowed to express and when there is a no need that systems they are going to be switch off okay now the next system here it is it is of the p bad it is the p bad vectors they are there now here okay uh, when okay uh, here there is a totally the you know uh, arabinose operon systems it is used here now under the p bad okay there is what there is a clone gene okay gene of interest it is kept under the p bad and uh, here the o2 o2 it is whom it is the operator operator from the arabinose operon pc it is the promoter uh, of whom rc okay i1 i2 they are the sites okay i1 okay i1 i2 i site it is there where the repressor and the activator is going to bind okay so this system now here uh, it has been shown that how there is a repression rc we know from the arabidose operon rc it is the repressor rc it is in the form of dimer it is going to bound to the operator okay so rc here it is a repressed condition this condition which has been shown here it is a repressed condition this rc dimer it is going to bound to the o2 and the i1 okay rc it is binding to the o2 and the i1 and there is a looping of the dna and due to this looping of the dna there is no expression of the gene which is under the control of the p band okay so it is it is when when there is a no presence of the arabinose in the medium when there is a no presence of the arabinose in the medium at that time the rc dimer it is binding to the o2 and the o1 forming the loop and and it is going to repress the gene which is under under the control of the p bad okay but when we need the expression of the gene okay when we need the expression of the gene at that time uh, this binding okay this binding it has to be detached that is this rc it has to be detached from the o2 and this it has to bound with the i2 what we have learned when we have learned about the arabinose operon in the arabinose operon the rc it is going to act as the activator as well as it is going to act as a repressor and here it is shown it is now acting as a repressor but when it has to be an activator at that time who has to come yes who has to come arabinose it has to come that arabinose it will come when you are going to add the arabinose in the medium okay when you are going to add the arabinose in the medium at that time what will happen at that time what will happen arabinose which is going to act as an inducer this arabinose it is binding to this repressor and allowing the rc to get bound to the both of the sites i1 and i2 which are the activator binding site and allowing the transcription from the p bad okay it is allowing the transcription from the p bad now here this rc which is an activator it is a uh, it is binding to i1 and i2 and here it is a cap binding site it is also present and here it is binding the cyclic mp crp complex and then there will be the start of the transcription and there will be the high level of the transcription when when both of the activators they are binding to the activator binding site which are the two activators here the first one it is the rc and the second one it is the cyclic mp crp complex so here by using the p bad vectors or by using the p bad promoters we can control we can control the level of the transcription high level of the transcription and the low level of the transcription how 
by adding the arabinosin medium you can remove the repression and allow the uh, rrc to act as an activator and allow the transcription okay but at the same when we are adding a small amount of the glucose there will be the low levels of the cyclic amp and as there are the as there are the low levels of the cyclic amp the crp or the cap it it will be in the inactive form and it cannot bind okay it cannot bind here at this cap binding site it cannot bind at this cap binding site thus here the single activator it is allowing the transcription and the level of the transcription it will be the lower as compared to the both of the activators they are binding to the activator binding site but when we want the high level of the okay when we want the high level of the expression at that time there will be the complete removal of the glucose from the medium so the cyclic amp levels they will be the high are you getting cyclic amp levels they will be the very high when when there is a no glucose in the medium so when we need the high level of the expression at that time what you are going to do you are removing complete glucose so the two activators which are that two activators cyclic amp crp complex and here the second one it is whom the rrc both they are the active one and they are binding to whom they are binding to the activator binding site and there will be the high level of the expression in this way okay in this way you are going to control the high and the low level of the expression and when you don't want any expression you are going to add the glucose in the medium and you are going to completely remove the arabinose from the medium and in this way you are going to control the expression of the gene that is you are going to hear here by removing the arabinose from the medium you are going to switch off the gene you are going to repress the gene okay i think you may have cleared the okay you may have cleared the uh, idea about the p bad vector on the system lambda pl system and also p et vectors okay so how you are going to use the regulated promoters for the expression of the uh, genes or the regulated expression of the genes this idea i think you have cleared now still if you have any doubt if you have any comment you can write down into the comment box if you like my video please subscribe my channel and also share my videos with your friends so the knowledge it is going to spread thank you